Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad to see you guys back here once again on the channel. So check it out. We all know that the brand new NVIDIA GTX 1070 Ti has hit the market and people are probably going, why? Well, I can honestly tell you why, and this is the reason why. NVIDIA didn't really have a spot to directly compete with the Vega 56 and the Vega 64. They had their 1070, then they had their 1080, but there was still a little bit of margin as long as pricing and stuff goes like that. So they made this card pretty much to be at the market to have a price of $449. Now, this makes it just slightly more expensive than a 56, but actually $100 cheaper than a Vega 64, and that's why they did. I mean, now they have a spot right in there at a lower price that's competing very, very well, totally beating the 56 on pretty much everything across the board. 56 can't keep up with this card. We do see a little switch off between the 64 and the 1070 Ti's, which you guys will obviously see in the video. But that said though, let's jump in real quick and I'll tell you guys the difference between a 1070 and a 1070 Ti for those people out there who don't know. We'll talk about our brand new test system. And this time we went a little bit of a different way with our test system. We usually always go for the top end things. We go for the i7, you know, we were gonna do the 7800, but we decided that we would use the brand new i5. 8600. So this is a really nice, oh, it's 8600K by the way. And this is a very nice CPU, very well priced and performs great. So let's real quick, let's talk about the differences between the 1070 Ti and the standard 1070. The standard 1070 had 1920 CUDA cores. The 1070 Ti has 2,432 CUDA cores. Now here's something that's a little bit tricky though. The 1070 Ti, even though it has a higher base clock of 1607 megahertz compared to the 1506 on the 1070, both cards share the same boost clock speed at 1683. All right, so you guys can see on paper the differences between the 1070 and the 1070 Ti are very, very minimal. We see a few more CUDA cores and we see 100 megahertz on the base clock and that's pretty much it. The memory, all the rest of the specs and everything are exactly the same as the 1070. No changes in all the things that you like about NVIDIA cards. The NVIDIA fans are all there. With that said though, let's check out the test system before we jump into those benchmarks. The test system used in today's video features an Intel Core i5-8600K with a maximum turbo frequency at 4.3 GHz and it requires 95 watts of TDP. The motherboard we use, the Gigabyte Z370 AORUS Ultra Gaming Motherboard featuring the Intel Z370 Express chipset. We're using 16 gigabytes of DDR4. This is the Corsair Dominator Platinum Series. It's two 8 gigabyte sticks at 3000 MHz. As far as the power supply goes, we're using the Seasonic Focus Plus Series SSR 850FX 850 watt 80 plus gold power supply. Now, as far as the OS goes, we use the latest patch version of Windows 10. We used a beta driver for the 1070 Ti, and we used the latest driver available from AMD for the Vega cards. With that said though, let's rock on and let's check out those benchmarks.
As far as the temperatures go, the GTX 1070 Ti got as high as 83 Celsius in her full load, which was actually right in the middle of all the cards we tested. All right, so at the end of the day, you guys can see that the 1070 Ti just fits in that weird space. It pretty much totally wipes out the 56. In DirectX 12, it actually gets beat by the 64 sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so at the end of the day, I just have to say this. This card is about $449. And obviously you guys see it does beat the Vega 56 by quite a bit. So is it worth $50 more than the Vega 56? I mean, I would honestly say yes. And it's $100 cheaper than the Vega 64. So, I mean, unless you're a person who's looking for a mining card, I mean, I probably wouldn't go with the Vega 64 over this card either. Now, some people are going to say, well, hey, it does better in some of the DirectX 12 games. But... Have you guys really played the DirectX 12 games? Because, I mean, in my opinion, I don't really feel like the games look any better or anything else in DirectX 12. It just seems to me like DirectX 12 just makes your games run slower, you know? Kind of like, you know, making your car out of, out of heavy weight so that your engine's got to run longer. I don't see really that great of improvements in DirectX 12. Visually, with me looking at it, I'm not seeing anything that great. So, is being a little bit better at DirectX 12 at this point in time better? Now, people are going to say, okay, but it's future-proof. I'm just gonna tell you this right now. I've been watching this game for years go on. As soon as DirectX 12 becomes the mainstay, pretty much whenever anything becomes the mainstay, I'm gonna say this right now, the mainstay. So what that means is that that's like with the thing that everybody's using because in the past, AMD many times has beat Intel and NVIDIA to the board with newer shit. I mean, it's happened. Let's just face it, for the longest time, the only CPU that would support 64-bit Windows was obviously an AMD chip. But the whole time they did it, nobody really used it because there was nothing out that was actually supporting it. And then guess what? The day that it actually became relevant, whoa, well, you know that Intel was there and they had a 64-bit CPU. So the same thing, the same thing's going to happen here in the video card market. As soon as DirectX 12 becomes super duper relevant, you know damn well Nvidia is going to have something to do that to change the game. Now, to me, if Nvidia really, really wanted to compete with a, with with the AMD, excuse me, they would make their cards more oriented for doing Bitcoin mining because if they did that then all those people out there buying up all the cards for Bitcoin mining and screwing gamers out of being able to buy their cards, that would pretty much be eliminated because people just go, oh, I don't have to buy that anymore, you know? And I think that would really work out well for them. When we're actually going to see that happen, I don't know. Now, I have heard rumors to that effect that's going to happen, but so far we've yet to see it. So you guys can see in all the testing and everything that this card fits in a spot. And I would pretty much say it's came in to be the Vega killer because it's only $50 more expensive than the 56 and it's $100 cheaper than the 64 and in most tests it beats the 64. In a few DirectX 12 things it doesn't but that's uh, to me a wee bit of margin and we're still looking at you know people you know buying the cards for Bitcoin mining, raising the prices up on AMD stocks so you can't get a hold of the card. So it not only becomes a game at the end of the day of which card actually runs better, it becomes which card can you actually afford and get your hands on, right? Because if you can't get your hands on it and you're going to be paying somebody on eBay or something like $900 to get a hold of a 64 card because you want to be a miner, well, the gamers out there, they're not going to be able to afford that because they're not actually making money off their card. They're spending money on their card. Anyways, I'm Elric. You guys have been watching Tech and Tomorrow. Peace out. Like usual, down below that like button. We'll have more information. So if you guys want to check out even more information, where to purchase cards and all that good stuff, we'll have it down there. We've also got more stuff coming up. Overclocking and SLI coming up next. Peace.